Well, joining us now to talk more about this technology is Torsten Pachor. He is a trained psychologist and a researcher from the Max Planck Institute for Human Development. Thank you very much for being with us today, Torsten. Uh, all right, let's start off by uh, this uh, the software, your opinion about this software. Um, can it really help fight break-ins? Well, apparently it does. Uh, based on what, what uh, the person has told us about the success of that tool, it, it, it really was helpful in decreasing crime rate mm -hmm. to a certain extent. So uh, based on that empirical data, it works. And actually, it's, it doesn't seem to be very surprising that it works because uh, the guys have done a good job extracting from past behavior using all the information, the data that they're out there, that are out there uh, to extract regularities in the behavior of uh, burglars. All right, now you study how people make decisions and judge risks. Let's talk about criminal behavior and burglars specifically. How does a burglar make a decision to rob a house, for example? Um, what, one of the studies that has specifically looked at decisions by burglar, burglars when they make a decision about where to break in is that they consider relatively few pieces of information about a potential object where they could uh, break in. And these uh, characteristics specifically concern first uh, what can be gained from breaking into a particular house, whether there are any signs that the people living there are rich. And on the other hand, they also consider the risk uh, of detection. So whether there's an ob obvious um, alarm system installed or whether there are, there are any bushes in the, in the garden where they could hide. So they really try to weigh the benefits and the risks when making these decisions. Okay, now that sounds rather superficial. Uh, when you look at it from a moral point of view, what about consequence? Do criminals have a different sense of consequence when regarding their actions? That's uh, one hypothesis in the literature, at least. And there have been a couple of studies that have specifically looked at the weighing of risks uh, by uh, people who end up in prison and a control group. And indeed, some research has shown that people who do have done criminal acts have different risk perceptions. So there seems to be some difference between uh, these people and uh, people who do not uh, act criminally. Right, okay. Um, now, you've conducted its extensive research with customs officials at a couple of airports in Switzerland. Tell us more about that work and uh, what you found out. How do customs officials target certain individuals? So what we have shown in this research is that customs officers use very simple strategies when they're making a decision about whom to search at an airport. Uh, and they also have to do that because they don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. to consider a lot of information about potential um, passengers who should be uh, searched. And interestingly, our research also has shown that people who do not have the same expertise as these customs officers, they use much more elaborate strategies. So this indicates that in order to use a very simple and efficient strategy, you need to have knowledge. All right. Well, we're going to end on that. Um, knowledge is always a good thing. Torsten, thank you very much for this discussion today. It's been very interesting. Thank you.